On a fateful day in late March 2014, a construction site for what was envisioned as a $50 million haven of luxury living in Houston, Texas, was engulfed by a devastating inferno. This catastrophic event sent plumes of smoke billowing into the sky, creating a haze over the city and leaving a stark reminder of the fire's ferocity. Amid the chaos, a construction worker named Curtis Rissey found himself trapped on the highest floor of the building, his escape routes cut off by flames. With no other option, Rissey sought refuge on a balcony, signaling for help. This act of desperation caught the attention of the fire department, sparking a desperate rescue operation. Yeah! He was inside there! Do they freaking see him? Unbelievable. Oh my god! <gasps> Hurry up! Oh Hurry god! Up. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh my god! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh! Oh my god! Keep going, keep going. Oh. Look at the glass melting up there. The window melting. They need to get him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Get closer to him. Hell, he can jump from there. I mean, good grief. I have been jumping, man. They need to move that truck up. Oh my god. I don't know why they're not evacuating this. I think that we probably should be going. That's time to evacuate the Just jump for it, man. Hell yes. Oh thank, oh, thank Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh my god. Oh no, oh my god. Oh. Miraculously, Rissi was saved from the engulfing flames, sustaining only minor injuries. His bold decision to navigate down a floor under such perilous conditions underscored the gravity of the situation and the slim margins between safety and catastrophe. The fire, suspected to have been sparked by a welding accident, rapidly spread, challenging firefighters who arrived to find an initially small blaze being whipped into a frenzy by the wind. In Jezreel Valley, located in northern Israel, the city of Afula, often referred to as the capital of the valley, became the backdrop for a remarkable tale of skill and calm under pressure. On a day not initially marked for emergency procedures, a flight instructor and their student faced an unforeseen challenge while piloting a Cessna 152, a popular aircraft known for its reliability and widespread use in flight training. This particular model, characterized by its fixed tricycle landing gear, dual control system, and various safety modifications available, unexpectedly lost all power during flight. The instructor, Drawing upon extensive experience, executed a flawless emergency landing. Instead of succumbing to panic, the instructor utilized the aircraft's design to their advantage, navigating to an open area for landing. <laughs> The maneuverability of the Cessna 152, equipped with differential ailerons and single-slotted Fowler flaps for improved control and landing capabilities, undoubtedly contributed to the successful outcome. Both the instructor and the student emerged from the incident without injury. In Lowndes County, Georgia, near the city of Valdosta, a startling event unfolded on May 24, 2023, as captured by a Lowndes County Sheriff's Office deputy's body camera. The incident occurred along Highway 84 while deputies were attending to an unrelated accident scene. A 21-year-old woman from Florida, 
driving a Nissan Altima, inadvertently launched her vehicle off the ramp of a stationary flatbed tow truck parked near the ongoing police activity. The car dramatically took flight, traveling approximately 120 feet before landing and rolling over. The footage, reminiscent of a movie scene, was recorded as the deputies were managing the previous incident. Despite the severe nature of the crash, the woman survived but sustained serious injuries and was subsequently hospitalized for two weeks at South Georgia Medical Center. There appears to have been some confusion from the driver's side, as she later claimed not to recall seeing the tow truck or understanding it was parked without warning signals in the lane. This bizarre and dangerous incident underscores the vital importance of attentiveness while driving, especially near accident scenes, and highlights ongoing concerns regarding road safety and emergency scene awareness. The driver faced charges related to driving without a license and failing to use seat belts. On July 2, 2020, an unsettling incident involving electric vehicles and their charging stations was captured, presumably occurring in a locale identifiable by Chinese license plates. This event has ignited discussions around the safety and reliability of electric vehicle infrastructure. The incident commenced with an unusual disruption emanating from an electric box-shaped car, noted for producing alarming sounds atypical for a standard vehicle, likened to the high-pitched screech of a kettle or the roar of an aircraft gearing for ascent. Such auditory signals often precede critical failures, and, in this case, heralded the imminent ignition of the vehicle. Remarkably, the charging apparatus maintained its integrity despite the intense heat and energy transfer into the now aflame vehicle. This unforeseen durability inadvertently led to a secondary hazard as the fire extended to an adjacent white truck, causing significant damage including a melted tire and compromised brake lines, which fortunately did not result in further vehicular displacement or collateral accidents. As the conflagration expanded, enveloping both the initial EV and the truck in flames, the scenario grew increasingly dire. Initially, it appeared that a third vehicle might avoid the spreading blaze. However, the intensity of the fire proved too overwhelming, leading to the visible ignition of its bumper. The cause of the fire remains speculative, with the electric car's battery being a plausible source given the circumstances. This event underscores the critical need for rigorous safety measures and monitoring when it comes to charging electric vehicles, as well as the importance of immediate response to unusual noises or signs of malfunction. This incident serves as a stark reminder for EV owners to remain vigilant and informed about the specific needs and potential hazards associated with their vehicles. In July 2021, the small agricultural community of Kuchpura in India witnessed an unusual phenomenon when a massive piece of land emerged from a river, standing as tall as 10 feet in certain areas. ਪਾਣੀ ਬੜੇਗਾ ਭਾਈ ਨੇ ਚੱਲੇ ਸੀ ਕਮਾਲ ਹੈ ਦੇਖ ਭੈਣ ਜੀ ਧਰਤੀ
ਪਤਨੀ ਭੋਲੇ ਨਾਥ ਨੇ ਕੀ ਕਰਦੀ ਆ ਜਮੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਜੇ ਤੋ ਭੋਲੇ ਕੋ ਜਾਣ ਦੇ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਹੀ ਨੂੰ ਠਾਵੇਗਾ ਇਹ ਦੇਖ ਮੇਰੇ ਭਾਈ ਓਏ ਅੱਗ ਲੱਗ ਦੇਖ ਅੱਗ ਲੱਗ ਵਿੱਕੀ ਦੇਖ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਭਾਈ ਪੂਰਾ ਪੂਰਾ ਠਾ ਗਿਆ ਉਹ ਸ਼ੁਕਰ ਮਾਨ ਕੇ ਨਾ ਲਗਾਈਏ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਪਾਸੇ ਵੀ ਜੀਰ ਲੱਗ ਗਈ ਜੀਰੀ ਹੋਏਗੀ ਭਾਈ ਇਸ ਕੀ ਜੀਰੀ ਮਰ ਜੇਗੀ ਬਾਕੀ ਤੇ ਰਹਿ ਜਾਏਗੇ It was later understood as a consequence of unsustainable agricultural practices. A farmer had tried to boost crop production by filling a deep pit with rice husk ashes and sand, planting rice on top. Following substantial rainfall, the soaked subterranean materials expanded, causing the earth above to rise dramatically. In Luding County located in China's Sichuan province, a dramatic sequence unfolded on September 5, 2022. This region was struck by a potent 6.8 magnitude earthquake. This seismic event, centered near the historically significant Moxi fault, unleashed more than just tremors. It triggered a series of landslides, particularly affecting the steep, mountainous areas. These landslides were not only a testament to the earthquake's power but also highlighted the geological vulnerability of the region, which sits astride the seismic Moxi fault, part of the larger Zianshu fault zone. The earthquake's impact was magnified by its timing, striking amidst the region's challenges with COVID-19 lockdowns, a preceding drought, and a heat wave that strained local resources. The tremors caused significant structural damage, affecting thousands of homes and infrastructure, including roads and hydropower stations. The landslides further exacerbated the situation. Roads, especially those connecting vital towns, were severely damaged or blocked, complicating rescue and recovery efforts. The landslide's extensive coverage and depth pointed to the immense force behind the earthquake and its aftershocks, highlighting the intricate relationship between seismic activity and geological instability in the region. This tragic event not only caused immediate disruption and loss but also offered crucial data for understanding seismic risks in mountainous regions. On the morning of September 28, 2018, the scheduled passenger flight Air New Eugenie Flight 73 was making its journey from Pohnpei Airport to Port Moresby Airport, with a stopover planned at Chuuk International Airport. Unfortunately, due to severe weather conditions including thunderstorms, the Boeing 737 under the command of a highly experienced Papua New Guinean captain with substantial flight hours ended up descending prematurely and landed in Chuuk Lagoon failing to reach the runway this incident triggered a spontaneous rescue operation by local residents and US Navy personnel who used small boats to aid in the evacuation of the aircraft's occupants
the initial relief that all 35 passengers and 12 crew members had been rescued soon turned to sorrow when it was discovered that an Indonesian male passenger had not made it out of the plane. Unfortunately, despite initially surviving the crash, he was found deceased days later. Investigations by the Papua New Guinea Accident Investigation Commission and the Department of Transportation, Communications and Infrastructure of the Federated States of Micronesia revealed critical lapses in the adherence to standard operating procedures by the flight crew. The approach to Chuk Airport was destabilized due to poor decision-making and a lack of response to multiple automated warnings, resulting in a failure to perform a necessary go-around. The co-pilot did not effectively challenge the captain's decisions, contributing to the loss of situational awareness. The post-crash evacuation was also problematic. Despite some acts of bravery, the process was hampered by confusion and non-compliance with instructions, as some passengers attempted to retrieve personal baggage. A comprehensive analysis underscored the necessity of strict adherence to safety protocols and highlighted areas for systemic improvement within Air New Guinea and broader aviation safety standards. In 2017, southeastern Manitoba witnessed the unique sight of an Ericsson air crane, an advanced heavy lift helicopter, undertaking the installation of 334 new electrical towers. This operation highlighted the helicopter's precision and efficiency, allowing for the setup of nearly 20 towers per day, a significant increase over the capabilities of traditional cranes. This method not only accelerated the project but also minimized environmental impact on the surrounding farmland. The S-64 air crane, originally developed by Sikorsky, has been a part of Ericsson Incorporated's fleet since the company acquired manufacturing rights in 1992. Ericsson has made over 1,350 enhancements to the helicopter, solidifying its role in a variety of heavy lift operations globally. This project in Manitoba is a testament to the innovative use of the S-64 in improving infrastructure while preserving the environment. In the spring of 2011, an intriguing incident occurred on Quebec's Autoroute 10, a vital expressway connecting Montreal with regions eastward, extending approximately 145 kilometers to the Sherbrooke vicinity. This highway, routinely bustling with numerous vehicles, witnessed an unusual event. A Cessna 172 aircraft had engine problems and was forced to make an emergency landing on the highway. The entire process was captured by an onboard camera. Despite the emergency situation, the pilots managed to establish a glide path and executed a successful forced approach amid traffic, ensuring that no one was injured during the landing. The Cessna 172, involved in this incident, is a model known for its reliability and popularity among aviation enthusiasts. Originating from American manufacturing, this four-seater aircraft, first introduced in 1956, has become the epitome of classic aviation design, cherished for its stability and simplicity. As of the mid-2010s, over 44,000 units had been produced, making it a common choice for training and recreational flying. In the French Alps, an illustrious ski destination is renowned for its dramatic elevation. This area boasts some of the most extensive skiable glaciers in Europe. However, venturing onto these glaciers is not without peril, requiring years of skill to navigate safely. In an unfortunate incident in April 2022, 
a seasoned skier with over a decade of experience underestimated the conditions, leading to a severe fall into a crevasse. Believing he was about to experience the thrill of powder skiing, he instead encountered a hidden crevasse, plummeting nearly 50 feet before miraculously being saved by his skis catching onto a ledge. This terrifying episode underscores the inherent risks associated with glacier skiing, which, despite its appeal, is fraught with hidden dangers, including crevasses that can exceed a hundred feet in depth. The skier's survival was fortuitous, especially considering he was rescued by his team, who were remarkably only 20 minutes away, despite the ordeal feeling much longer. The French Alps have been the backdrop for several tragic incidents, underscoring the importance of safety and caution in these majestic yet unforgiving terrains. For instance, a British skier suffered fatal injuries after a fall, prompting a significant rescue effort and an investigation into the accident. In December 2020, during the Miss Thailand pageant in Chiang Mai, a photo shoot on a suspension bridge went awry as it collapsed, sending 30 contestants into a pond below. This mishap occurred on the competition's second day, with participants dressed casually and holding bubble tea. <laughs> Despite the bridge not being able to support their combined weight, only three contestants were injured, and all were promptly treated and discharged from the hospital. The event's venue owner pledged to strengthen the bridge to prevent future incidents and compensated for the contestants' medical bills and cleaning of their dresses. This video was captured in Bhubaneswar, the capital of Odisha, India. Its coastal proximity subjects it to severe weather phenomena like cyclones. In 2019, Bhubaneswar and the broader Odisha region faced a formidable challenge when Cyclone Fonny, categorized at its peak as an extremely severe cyclonic storm, struck the region. This natural disaster, occurring on May 3, became notable as the most intense to impact Odisha since the devastating 1999 cyclone. The state's response to this calamity was exemplary. More than a million people were evacuated from vulnerable coastal areas to safer locations and shelters as part of one of the largest human evacuations in response to a natural disaster. The collaborative efforts of over 45,000 volunteers and numerous government and non-governmental organizations underscored Odisha's preparedness and commitment to minimizing human casualties. Despite the extensive infrastructure and property damage, the proactive measures significantly reduced the human toll compared to past cyclones. The aftermath saw widespread disruption, especially in power and communication infrastructures, leading to an intensive recovery and rebuilding effort. Notably, Edis's management of the cyclone has been recognized globally, serving as a model for disaster preparedness and response. Following Fonny, 
the region continued to improve its disaster management strategies, which was tested again during Cyclone Amphan in 2020. Despite the successive challenges, the state's approach has continued to evolve, prioritizing safety and rapid response to minimize the impacts of such natural disasters. An extraordinary event unfolded in Aquith, Georgia, on April 2, 2018. At the intersection of School and Main Street, a tractor trailer became ensnared on the railway tracks. Miraculously, the driver escaped unharmed before an oncoming train made its inevitable approach. Despite the urgent warnings from descending crossbars and flashing red lights, along with the train's blaring whistle, a collision was unavoidable. The guy got out though. Yeah, the, the, the guy got out, but... The force of the train was such that it cleaved the truck into two, dragging the rear section in a dramatic whirl. Following the collision, the train ground to a halt, leaving behind a scene of chaos and a stationary SUV by the stop sign. The event, captured on video by local resident highlights a recurring hazard in the area, as trucks frequently find themselves trapped on these tracks. Fortunately, this harrowing incident resulted in only minor injuries, a testament to the swift response of the Aquith Fire Department. Spanning the Pearl River and connecting Guangzhou's Nonsha District to Human Town in Dongguan, the Human Pearl River Bridge stands as a significant architectural feat in Guangdong Province, China. This engineering marvel, inaugurated on June 9, 1997, integrates a suspension bridge section with a span of 888 meters and a segmental concrete section. Recognized for its resilience, the bridge was designed to withstand the with wind speed considerations at the deck level set to 61 meters per second. On May 5, 2020, the Human Bridge experienced a noteworthy incident when it was subjected to severe oscillations due to strong winds, captured vividly on camera. The bridge's vibrations prompted immediate action from traffic authorities, leading to its closure at 15.32 local time to ensure public safety. Subsequent inspections by engineers affirmed the structural integrity of the bridge, attributing the oscillations to normal behavior under specific wind conditions, with the expectation that such movements would not compromise driving safety if kept within a tolerable range. After a thorough structural safety assessment, the bridge resumed normal operations on May 15, albeit with restrictions on large buses and trucks. The episode drew attention to the bridge's aerodynamics, particularly the influence of a 1.2-meter-high retaining wall added to the deck, which disrupted the bridge's streamline and contributed to the vortex vibration experienced. This incident underlined the critical balance between structural design and environmental factors such as wind, highlighting the ongoing need for vigilance and adaptation in engineering practices to ensure the longevity and safety of such infrastructures in typhoon-prone areas. In the high-altitude city of Baiji, situated within China's Guizhou province, residents are no strangers to the frequent rain due to its subtropical monsoon climate influenced by both its elevation and geographical position. Typically, a city, lying approximately 1,700 meters above sea level, experiences rainfall on over half the days in a year, making it prone to natural disasters such as landslides. In early May 2022, a particularly severe weather event underscored this vulnerability. Following periods of sustained rainfall, a massive landslide was triggered in the Bay Inn community area on May 8. This disaster highlighted the inherent risks faced by the region. The video showed significant rockfall activity prior to the event, a forewarning of the impending disaster given the area's history and geological conditions. Despite the usual rainfall patterns, the specific downpour leading to this catastrophe did not report as exceptionally high, indicating the complex nature of landslide triggers in this terrain.
保持着排哦，害怕。快跑快跑快躲他！躲他！躲他！躲到位！ The aftermath of this landslide was dire, with two people reported dead and significant property damage, underscoring the critical need for constant vigilance and disaster preparedness in such areas. The footage captured by local residents and subsequently shared on social media illustrated the rapid onset and destructive power of the landslide, propelling a mix of rock, soil, and debris down the mountainside at alarming speeds. A stark reminder of the potent forces at play in this picturesque yet perilous landscape. Ocean-bound automotive transport vessels are remarkable engineering feats, hosting up to 12 levels that can accommodate over 8,000 vehicles for global distribution. These ships tightly organize vehicles, leaving minimal space between them. In certain scenarios, to maximize space. Additional vehicles may be loaded onto the exposed uppermost deck. However, this practice led to a regrettable incident involving a Russian ship, illustrating a critical oversight. Exposed to the elements, vehicles on the upper deck were affected when sea spray caused electrical malfunctions in their batteries. During one nocturnal voyage, the unexpected happened: vehicles at the front of the ship ignited, the fire rapidly spreading, ultimately incinerating the vehicles on the upper level. Oh. Что с пожарником? Запускается он или нет? От балласного мы можем запитать. Сейчас. The origins and destinations of these cars remain unknown, yet the loss extended beyond the vehicles to include personal belongings, transforming the cargo into a mere memory by dawn. The incident serves as a harsh reminder of the chemistry between salt water and automotive batteries, a dangerous mix prone to sparking and igniting flammable substances. Maritime transport regulations stipulate minimal fuel levels within vehicles to prevent such mishaps, emphasizing the importance of internal storage for vehicular cargo. Those considering maritime vehicle transport should insist on below-deck storage to avert similar hazards. Indonesia, home to an impressive collection of volcanoes due to its position on the Pacific Ring of Fire, faces significant volcanic threats, particularly from Mount Merapi, known as the nation's most active volcano. Spanning the border between Yogyakarta and Central Java provinces, Merapi stands out not only for its frequent activity but also for its potential danger to the millions residing within its vicinity. On the morning of May 11, 2018, Mount Merapi demonstrated its formidable nature through a phreatic eruption, which involves the heating of groundwater by magma, leading to a violent release of steam and volcanic materials. This event prompted immediate evacuations within a 5-kilometer radius and led to the temporary closure of the nearby Addis Ujipto International Airport in Yogyakarta due to the ash plume. The eruption marked the beginning of a new phase of dome growth for Merapi, indicating heightened activity and an increased risk of pyroclastic flows. Eh, ono olate, Mas. Wah, gizi nak kan di. Gizi tok di. Hari si masih kolu mangan ora iki. Astagfirullahaladzim. Astagfirullahaladzim. Perlindung, astagfirullahaladzim. Astag. Hai Becky, Becky. Perlu di depan mata saya. Menapi erupsi. Kementerian lagi, kementerian. Astagfirullahaladzim. Erupsi menapi. Kita. Jauh apa ya, sedikit. Mengungsi. Menapi erupsi. Despite the eruption's immediate impacts, including ash fall on surrounding villages and disruptions to local air travel, the volcano's alert level was not raised beyond its usual status, suggesting no immediate escalation in threat. However, the incident served as a stark reminder of Merapi's volatility. By 2018, 
The mountain had already been responsible for multiple significant eruptions in the past, including a deadly event in 2010 that resulted in 347 fatalities and the displacement of 20,000 villages. The 2010 eruption was characterized by a notable increase in seismic activity, magma rising close to the surface, and subsequent evacuation orders from Indonesian authorities for those living within a 10-kilometer zone around the volcano. In late 2015, the Canyon County neighborhood of Santa Clarita, California, experienced a significant geological event when a landslide dramatically altered Vasquez Canyon Road. This incident wasn't merely a disruption, it became a spectacle of nature's force reshaping the land. The landslide was unusual in that it caused the adjacent hillside to fail, slipping down and pushing up the road surface, resulting in portions of the road rising more than 15 feet. This phenomenon left local authorities and geologists puzzled as the hillside's movement underneath the pavement lifted it, creating a scene likened to an emerging mountain. This landslide was described as a catastrophic failure of the roadway, showcasing the powerful and unpredictable nature of landslides. Despite the spectacular nature of the event, it underscored the challenges faced by communities when natural forces come into play. Vasquez Canyon Road served as a crucial link between major roads in and out of Santa Clarita, highlighting the impact such events can have on local infrastructure and daily life. The road's closure forced residents and officials to reckon with the area's geology and the ongoing risk of landslides. This event also sparked conversations and investigations into the causes of such unusual geological activity, with some attributing it to heavy rains possibly related to El Nino conditions. In the wake of Super Typhoon Rai, locally named Odette, the Philippines faced a profound tragedy not just in loss of life and property but also in its economic foundations, particularly affecting those dependent on the sea. Among the most poignant images of devastation were those from Bayawan City, where local fishermen discovered the extent of their losses firsthand. Their boats, crucial for their livelihood, were found entangled in a mass of debris and wreckage, creating a floating barge of destruction along the waterways. This site was not just a loss of property but a symbol of the disaster's impact on the community's way of life, with many fishermen left to wonder about their future in the storm's aftermath. As the super typhoon, described as one of the strongest storms to hit the islands in 2021, ravaged through the Philippines, its destructive power was evident in the obliteration of entire fleets of fishing boats. This calamity was particularly severe for coastal communities, where fishing is not just an occupation but a way of life passed down through generations. The destruction of boats meant not only immediate economic loss but also a significant impact on the community's ability to recover and sustain itself in the long term. The aftermath scenes in Bayawan City, with locals inspecting what little remained of their means to earn a living, underscore the broader implications of such natural disasters on livelihoods and regional economies. The international and local response to this disaster included efforts to address the immediate needs for shelter, food, and clean water, but the road to recovery is a long one especially for those whose livelihoods were directly tied to the now devastated resources. The story of the fishermen and their lost boats is a stark reminder of the human element often overshadowed by the larger economic figures and statistics. As the Philippines and the international community rallied to support the affected, the resilience of these communities and the challenges they face in rebuilding their lives and livelihoods remain at the forefront of the recovery process. In the vicinity of Mesa, Arizona, a prominent city neighboring Phoenix with a substantial population, a critical incident transpired on the Salt River during early March 2017. This river, known for its extensive journey from Arizona's White Mountains to the urban landscapes of Phoenix, is a popular destination for water sports enthusiasts. On a fateful day, local law enforcement was alerted to a distressing situation. A man was reportedly trapped amidst the river's currents, 
struggling for survival. The individual, later identified as a local homeless man who had set up residence in what was usually a dry segment of the riverbed, had been caught unprepared by a sudden water release from an upstream dam, a consequence of recent heavy rainfall. His attempts to salvage his possessions led to a perilous situation where he found himself adrift, ultimately clinging to debris for life as the chilling waters and swift currents thwarted any efforts to self-rescue. The intervention of a helicopter pilot from the local police was crucial. Demonstrating remarkable skill, the pilot executed a rescue operation, safely retrieving the stranded man from his precarious position in the river. This man, who had faced the harsh realities of homelessness, encountered the formidable power of nature but was fortunate to survive the ordeal with assistance from the authorities. Following the incident, he received medical treatment, highlighting a moment of community and perseverance amidst the unpredictable challenges posed by natural forces. Fuyong, a city in China known for its blend of modern urban life and traditional farmland experienced a rare and unexpected natural disaster in June 2022. A significant tornado assessed with an EF2 peak strength, ravaged parts of Guangzhou, also in Guangdong province, not far from Fuyong, on June 16, 2022. The tornado traversed a distance of 1.5 kilometers in a span of five minutes, thankfully not resulting in any fatalities. This event underscores the unusual nature of tornadoes in China. Related occurrence, the city of Foshan, situated within the same province, was hit by an EF-1 tornado just days later, on June 19. This event marked a rare instance of multiple tornadoes occurring in close geographical and temporal proximity within the region. It was part of a week that saw an unusual flurry of tornado activity, impacting various cities across the province typically, China records fewer than 100 tornadoes annually. The rarity of such events, combined with less robust preparedness systems, often results in significant damage when tornadoes do occur. This incident took place in Yunnan province of China. The province is recognized for its abundant natural resources and holds the title for the most varied types of flora within China. Its scenic mountainous landscapes are not without risk, however, as they are prone to sudden and dangerous avalanches. In early 2022, a dramatic event underscored the unpredictability of these natural disasters. A terrifying scene unfolded as an individual was captured on camera frantically fleeing an onrushing avalanche. The video shifts perspective, showing the relentless flow of snow engulfing the surroundings. Miraculously, a group of nearby hikers escaped unscathed, albeit visibly shaken from the ordeal. It was a fortunate end to what could have been a tragic event, with no casualties or structural damage reported. This video was captured in Ankang, a city located in southern Shanxi province, China. The climate in Ankang in monsoon influenced which brings, 
hot, humid, and wet summers with partly cloudy skies, while winters are very cold, dry, and mostly clear. Temperature variations throughout the year are significant, generally ranging from 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The city is prone to landslides, mostly in periods of heavy rain. Like in this instance, a rainstorm has eroded the area around this residential building, leading to an inevitable collapse. Several cameras capture the exact moment when the building gave way. Fortunately, no injuries were reported. Geologically, southern Shanxi, including Ankang is characterized by a weak geological structure prone to different natural disasters. Despite extensive efforts to map out and monitor these areas, the challenge remains immense, with my many parts still not thoroughly examined. In Ratchaburi, located in Thailand, a 25-year-old thrill seeker and inventor has elevated the traditional long-tail boat into a marvel of modern engineering. Drawing from a deep-seated tradition that began in the early 20th century, his integration of a high-powered drag racing engine into a wooden long-tail boat showcases a cutting-edge innovation. Longtail boat, a symbol deeply embedded in Thailand's maritime culture, originated from the ingenious modifications by local craftspeople, starting with Sanong Thitibora in the 1930s. This innovation has continuously evolved, reflecting the inventive spirit of Thai people, particularly those from coastal communities. The propulsion system of these boats, characterized by an elongated propeller shaft, allows for remarkable maneuverability and the ability to navigate shallow waters, making them indispensable for fishing, transportation, and now, recreational racing. Aircraft engaged in combating wildfires perform with remarkable precision, a spectacle of skill and technological prowess. These missions involve meticulously piloting aircraft to release vast quantities of fire retardant substances onto specific targets, such as a vehicle for training purposes. During one such exercise, an aircraft ascended from the airstrip, executed a strategic loop to align perfectly over its target, and with the pilot's expert timing, unleashed a deluge of fire-quenching gel. This gel, amounting to approximately 9,000 pounds, was so forceful it demolished a vehicle used for the exercise, an event captured by an onboard camera to showcase the impact and effectiveness of the retardant. These firefighting operations vary in scale, with certain aircraft having the capacity to distribute up to 75,000 kilograms of retardant across vast areas affected by wildfires. The extent of coverage is significant, ranging from 100 to 600 meters for smaller aircraft and extending beyond a mile for larger ones. This strategic dispersal of retardant is crucial in mitigating the spread of wildfires, showcasing the blend of human skill and technological advancement in protecting natural and urban environments from the ravages of fire. In 2018, Vanderhoof, British Columbia, part of a region heavily impacted by wildfires, witnessed unprecedented natural disasters alongside other communities. 
that year marked a historic peak in British Columbia's wildfire activity, with over 2,115 fires burning across 1.35 million hectares of land, a scale that surpassed the already massive wildfires of the previous year. Amid these conditions, the residents faced not only the spreading flames but also unique phenomena such as a powerful fire tornado. You said get in the truck, right? The subsequent economic and social impact on small, rural businesses in areas like Vanderhoof was significant. The wildfires disrupted local economies, displacing staff, reducing clientele, and causing extensive damage to infrastructure. To address these challenges, initiatives such as the Wildfire Business Transition Project were launched, aimed at aiding recovery and providing support to affected businesses. This project, backed by Western Economic Diversification Canada, offered vital resources to over 2,600 businesses, helping to sustain local economies and preserve jobs in the wake of the disaster. This community-centric approach underlines the broader efforts required for recovery and rebuilding in the aftermath of such extensive environmental and economic disruptions. In a captivating encounter at a national park in Botswana, renowned for its diverse African safari wildlife including elephants, a group of tourists experienced the sheer unpredictability and grandeur of nature. During their journey, they witnessed the remarkable family dynamics of African elephants, particularly an intense moment involving a protected bull elephant. <laughs> African elephants, known for their massive size and social complexity, are intriguing creatures. On this particular day, tourists observed these majestic creatures in their natural habitat, an unforgettable experience underscored by the sudden charge of the bull elephant. Despite their immense size, African elephants can reach speeds up to 24 km per hour, about 15 miles per hour, close to their maximum running speed, demonstrating their significant agility despite their bulk. This agility was showcased as the bull elephant attempted to protect its family from perceived threats. The incident underscores the immense physical capabilities of these animals. Their trunks alone are remarkable appendages containing around 50,000 muscles, utilized for a variety of tasks from feeding to social interactions. The Gustav III Airport, also known as St. Barthélemy Airport or St. Jean Airport, is located in the village of St. Jean on the Caribbean island of St. Barthélemy. This airport is unique due to its short runway, which is just 646 meters long, and its proximity to automotive traffic, making landings particularly challenging. Pilots need special certification to land here because of the steep approach and immediate stop required to avoid the ocean at the runway's end. Despite its precarious location and operational requirements, the airport is considered highly safe by aviation experts, given the stringent qualifications required for pilot. The airport serves primarily small regional commercial aircraft and charters, catering mostly to tourists with aircraft that carry fewer than 20 passengers. The most common planes include the Pilatus PC-12, Cessna 208B Grand Caravan, the Havilland DHC-6 Twin Otter, and Britain Norman BN-2 Islander. The airport's short airstrip is at the base of a gentle slope ending directly on the beach, adding to the unique and thrilling approach for pilots and passengers alike. 
this feature also makes it a popular spot for plane spotters and tourists on the beach, offering an up-close view of aircraft in flight as they land and take off. Regarding safety and incidents, while the airport has a notable reputation for its challenging landings and takeoffs, there have been a few accidents in its history, reflecting the inherent risks associated with its unique geographic and operational conditions. However, specific recent data on incidents were not provided, indicating that while the airport maintains a high safety standard, the unique conditions under which it operates continue to demand the utmost care and professional skill from its pilots. This incident took place in Rockford, a city located in Illinois, holds a significant place due to its position along the Rock River, contributing to its industrial success. In recent times, the city witnessed a transformation with the redevelopment of the former Amarok factory into the embassy suites by Hilton Rockford Riverfront, now a hallmark of modern accommodation and business facilities in the region. This transformation wasn't just a change of infrastructure but also a significant boost to the local economy and urban landscape, addressing a once vacant and deteriorating structure along the riverbank. The project, initiated by Fia Graham for environmental site assessment and planning, and taken over by Gorman and Company for Development, spanned several years from the initial assessments in 2008 to the opening of the hotel in July 2020. However, in March 2018, it faced a significant challenge. The scaffolding erected for the construction encountered a structural failure, leading to an unexpected collapse. We fought the, uh, the tarp. This event posed questions about safety measures and project management, prompting investigations and reviews. Despite the setbacks, the project, with an estimated cost of over $87 million, managed to incorporate modern design while respecting the industrial heritage of the building. The complex now boasts a plethora of amenities including multiple dining venues, an indoor pool, and extensive conference spaces. Furthermore, the development reflects a broader trend in Rockford's approach to urban renewal and economic revitalization, underpinned by collaborations between private developers and city planners. This video was captured in Livingston, Zambia. In a dramatic incident on May 23, 2021, tourists on a boat were pursued by an agitated hippopotamus over a distance of about 200 meters on the Zambezi River. This event showcases the unpredictable nature of wildlife in Zambia, highlighting the importance of safety and vigilance while enjoying the natural beauty of such areas. The incident underscores the agility and speed hippos can exhibit, especially when they feel threatened or disturbed. Hippos, despite their sizable appearance, are capable of moving quickly in water. They are known to be one of the most dangerous animals in Africa due to their territorial nature, especially when in water. This unusual encounter drew significant attention online, showcasing the sheer power and unexpected nature of wildlife in African water bodies. The chase ended safely for the tourists as the hippo eventually returned to its pod. The occurrence serves as a thrilling yet cautionary tale for many adventurers attracted to Africa's rich landscapes and diverse wildlife.